Justice, I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Corey Lewandowski, Florida Congressman Ron DeSantis, and Hillary's America author Dinesh D'Souza among my guests tonight. But first, statement. Now, most people learn from their mistakes when things go wrong. They figure out why and readjust. But when you keep doing the same thing over and over and don't learn from your mistakes, that is the textbook definition of insanity. So my title for Hillary Clinton's new book instead of what happened is living in denial and in need of a lobotomy. Hillary, snap out of it. Do I have to go through this again? What happened? You lost. He won. Karma's a bitch. Sorry, Ma. Now, you keep blaming everyone but yourself. We've had it with the poor me nonsense. And now add a few more enemies to the Clinton hate list. Now, Bernie Sanders, who, by the way, would have beaten you if the fix wasn't in with your girlfriend, Debbie Wasserman Schultz at the DNC, and your other girlfriend, Donna Brazil, sending you debate questions, and Joe Biden, Jim Comey, Russia, the FBI, misogyny, Anthony Weiner, Barack Obama, Matt Lauer, the New York Times for focusing on your illegality, and the Electoral College, a constitutional mandate. What happened? You lost because people don't like you. They don't trust you. You're arrogant and condescending. You call them names like deplorable. And you have the moral core of a jellyfish. And you wonder why your accomplishments are recognized. Your State Department lied and said there were no emails on Benghazi. You out and out lied that there was no classified information on your email server and that you did it for convenience when we all know you set up a private non-secure server so that you and your girlfriends, Uma and Cheryl, allegedly doing State Department work, could raise money for the organized criminal enterprise known as the Clinton Foundation which was nothing more than a campaign slush fund allowing you to take money from foreign governments and live a life to which government employees are unaccustomed. And when the criminality started to surface, the Clinton machine made sure the fix was in. Since when in a serious federal investigation regarding our classified information, do prosecutors hand out immunity deals with no goal of building their case, doing nothing more than granting them protection from future prosecution? Since when are targets allowed to sit in on each other's interviews, then allowing the targets to claim attorney-client privilege and stop the questioning? Since when are is evidence like laptops, critical evidence, destroyed? And no grand jury impaneled? Hillary, you're good at it, and you are the epitome of public corruption. The fix? Your friend Barack Obama in April 2016 says there was no malicious intent on your part to expose our classified documents. Shortly thereafter, the Washington Post mimics Obama saying there's no malicious intent and our secrets were never in danger. And at the very same time, weeks before 17 witnesses and the target herself are questioned, Jim Comey writes an exoneration of you as a criminal target using the same words. Except malicious intent is not an element of the crime, folks. And anyone who tells you that a prosecutor drafts an exoneration memo of a target before the investigation is complete, has never prosecuted a case, is a complete idiot or an out and out liar. And this week, 1,617 new documents and a total now of 627 new emails never turned over by you that paint a picture of a cold, calculated woman on the road to power by any means possible using our State Department as a pay-to-play.
and the Obama and the Clinton holdovers, the deep state still at work, even under President Trump, fighting to prevent the American people from seeing those documents and emails saying you, Hillary Clinton, are entitled to your privacy. And you lament that Benghazi hurt you politically and then have the unmitigated goal to say Donald Trump presents a clear and present danger to the country? Darling, it was under your watch that four brave Americans died in Benghazi. It was under your State Department that these men were refused the security they repeatedly requested. And you had the gall to promote the video lie, swearing the man who made the video, a First Amendment constitutional right, by the way, would go to jail. But then again, what difference does it all make? And you scold women in your book who didn't vote for you, saying you won't give them absolution, that they must live with the consequences. Who do you think you are, God? And a woman's rights activist? You? You're the biggest hypocrite of them all. Removing words like freedom, empowering women, and making sure that you don't sound sympathetic to women's plights in Saudi Arabia when you were raising money there. Hillary, what do you call someone willing to give up everything she believes in, her moral core, for money? Attorney General Jeff Sessions must open a new federal criminal investigation into Hillary Rodham Clinton and panel a grand jury immediately and void the false Clinton immunity deals. Easily done since each one has been violated. Hillary should not get a free pass because she lost an election. Her reign was one of bold, brazen, in-your-face, pay-to-play corruption. It's time to stop this psychopath from continuing her nonstop stream of lies and criminal activity. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram, hashtag Judge Janine. And joining me now with reaction to all the latest news from the Trump administration and my opening statement, President Trump's former campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. All right, good evening, Corey. Good evening, Judge. Great opening statement. I loved it. Well, you know, I, I, I'm amazed. I mean, how does a woman spend this much time talking about herself when she's a loser? If I were a loser like that, I'd be in a corner depressed and hiding. Well, the greatest part is she continues to blame everybody but herself for the worst run campaign in the history of presidential campaigns. She completely forgot where Wisconsin was on the map. <laughs> yeah. She lost Iowa. She lost Ohio. The Russians had nothing to do with her being a terrible candidate. It wasn't that she was a woman. It was that she was her. That's why people didn't vote for her. It yeah. had nothing to do with gender. It's well, the fact that people knew who Hillary was and knew that she was a terrible candidate and knew she wouldn't protect American citizens if Benghazi was any indication of the kind of responsibility that she would have. And the woman had no credibility, no trustworthiness, but enough about her. Now, let's talk about the president. President Trump has been doing some very interesting things lately. And there is talk that he is now reaching across the aisle, uh, especially if you listen to Pelosi and to Schumer, uh, that he's ready to deal with the Democrats. What do you know to be the case? And what do you think the implications are? What I know is this president has laid out a clear vision for America. And in the first eight months of his administration, the Republican Party has failed to repeal and replace Obamacare, which they were supposed to have done by April. The American people are very clear. We want a change agent to go to Washington to get things done. This president is a person who's pledged to get things done. He's a business executive who knows how to get things done. And if that means the Republicans aren't going to work with him to repeal and replace Obamacare and to get our tax reform package done, then he's going to put a coalition together because the American people deserve it. Well, you know what's interesting is that uh, I, I think that the vast majority of Americans agree with him. The, the dreamers, and let's talk about DACA. I mean, they're here, you know, under no, uh, you know, uh, they didn't come here illegally. Their parents brought them as children. But I think the interesting thing is, if he says he has concern for them and he cares about them, I believe that it is ultimately going to help him on both sides.
that it's not really a question of whether or not, uh, you know, the right is going to uh, uh, dump him and whether or not the left is going to uh, uh, criticize him. I think it's good across the board. Look, Judge, the, the most important thing that this president can do and as a pledge that we made on the campaign that he's going to fulfill, he's going to build a wall on the southern border. That's going to stop the flow of illegal immigration into our country. It's going to save American lives. That has to be the priority. You put that and you couple it with tax reform for the middle class. You cut the business tax down to 15 percent and you bring back all that trillions of dollars sitting overseas. Guess what? Now we have a country that's actually putting America first. You stop the flow of illegal immigration so people are safe in their homeland. You give them more money and you get government out of the way. The rest can be dealt with later. But those are the priorities. You know, what do you say to those people on the right uh, who are, you know, very upset with the president? Um, I say, just so you know where I'm coming from and tell me if I'm wrong, good for him. I am sick and tired of the Paul Ryans, the Mitch McConnells saying the president comes in with unrealistic expectations. And the, the, the senators who voted to uh, uh, replace and repeal Obamacare campaigned on it. And then when they had a chance to do it, you know, uh, uh, demurred. I'll use that. I mean, th this president has no choice. He's working for us and he's bucking the establishment on both sides. Is he not? Judge, he ran as an outsider to Washington. He didn't run as one of the swamp creatures. He ran as somebody who wanted to bring change. And if that means you've got to work across the aisle to bring the change that you promised, you have to do that. Look, the, the Senate leadership knew that the president pledged to repeal and replace Obamacare, and they couldn't even get the vote done to actually have a vote on their, on their bill itself. They couldn't get past the procedural motion, which is absolutely crazy. Look, the president wants money for the wall. He has pledged that. He has pledged that he's going to cut the corporate tax rate and to bring money back from overseas and double the deductions from middle class working families. And here we are in September, past Labor Day, and none of these things have been done. We don't have a transportation bill done. The Republicans and Democrats have failed the American people for 30 years, and you finally have a president who's going to hold them accountable. Do you think this is the end of the Republican Party? I mean, I look, I, I believe that, you know, middle America is fed up with the gamesmanship. And if the Republican Party had its way, this president would not have any legislative su successes and he'd be going into the midterms, uh, you know, a legislative failure. And I, I get that there have been there's legislation that he signed. But is the Republican Party over? I think I think what Donald Trump showed you in the primaries and ultimately in the general election were. People aren't so concerned about the party. It's about someone who's going to bring the change to Washington. We're $20 trillion in debt, Judge, and Republicans and Democrats for the last 30 years have added to that debt. We haven't had a balanced budget except for one or two years since Newt Gingrich was the Speaker of the House. What have Republicans done to bring that debt down? It's time to have someone who's willing to take control, take command, and say, you know what, Washington, business as usual is over. Donald Trump is coming to change it because that's what he's pledged to do. Tough job for him, but uh, I still believe he's going to do it. And I believe that, uh, that his supporters are with him all the way. Corey Lewandowski, thanks for being with us.